Hey all, so I thought we'd cover fixing meshes when you're having problems with them. This is a general approach to take, but in this case it's the intersection masker which isn't working and that basically tells you that there's a problem with the mesh. This came up because I was asked by Eva Sparaini, I'm sorry if I've butchered your name, uh, I was asked by her to help her look at a model and why the intersection masker wasn't working with it. The original model is from an artist by the name of Vladimir Lalich, I again hope I got his name right, who kindly gave me permission to use his model to demonstrate the approach I take to fixing this kind of thing. You can see both Ava and Vladimir's work in the links in the description. So when you want to use the intersection masker, which is available here in the Z plugin menu under intersection masker, you can't just click it like this and have three separate subtools. We have to merge all of these subtools together. So the first thing we do is go to the top and we hit merge down. And I'm just going to say, okay, merge down, okay. So if I press shift F, we can see the different polygroups. This is all here. So in theory, all you should be able to do is just go down here and say, create intersection mask. And this is where we're getting this error. It's saying that this is not a single water type mesh. And this is basically telling us that we have a few problems and that we need to fix this. Just any one of these on their own probably won't do it. So we just go through what the actual approach for these kind of corrupt meshes would normally be. So I'm going to start with the project again, where we have the three separate subtools before we've even merged them down and look at the approach for how we would fix our meshes. So the first thing I always do is go down to geometry and under here you have check mesh integrity. You'll notice here that if I press the up and down arrow keys, I can cycle through my subtools here on the left hand side. So I'm just going to close this and open this and I press up. So I'm at the top subtool and I'm going to say check mesh integrity. And that's going to find some problems with this mesh saying it's got 18 faces. And if I click again, it'll tell me that we've got 83 edges that are a problem. If we hit fix mesh, it will in theory fix this. I can press the down key, which is getting me to the next subtool in the list. So if you have multiple, you can just use the key on your keyboard, the up and down keys to just cycle through them. And this one has 110 faces and 250 edges. I'll click fix mesh as well. And the same for the last one, which has fewer problems. So this isn't everything that you need to do, but it's a good start. At least there are some, some fixes to the mesh. But what we next want to do is just make sure that we don't have um, stuff like holes in the mesh. And there are some holes in this mesh here. Uh, I don't know if you can see them here. There are some holes on a close inspection. The geometry up here is a little bit ropey. You know, there's some, some problematic stuff in here. So the next thing I would tend to do is go to modify topology and just hit close holes and that will close some of these. Now, when you do that, again, mesh integrity, if you hit this, you may find that there's some issues. I'll go down and I'll close holes on the other two. Again, I'm using the down arrow key just to select that and the down arrow key for the last one. And now that I've closed the holes, I'll just do that check again and they all seem to be fine. This probably still isn't enough. If we were to merge this down, we're probably still gonna have an issue. So for me, the main thing that I do to fix this is I actually generally tend to use Ziri mesh meshes. So while this is a Dynamesh and it's fine, it's 671,620 and 1 million polygons. For me, if I want, I want to guarantee that things are going to work from when I'm cleaning up my meshes, I tend to do a Ziri mesh. The reason I do this is because sometimes you actually have problems that you're not even aware of. So for example, if I select this left wing here and I go into solo mode for it, what we can do is go down to our polygroups and say auto groups, and that will take any contiguous meshes and give them one different one polygroup. The way to check to see that you only have one group here, one solid object and no floating little faces around, is just to hit control and shift and click on that. That in theory will hide any objects that are not this. So now we can go to geometry, and hit modify topology and hit delete hidden. If you got a message like this, there was nothing hidden. There was nothing to hide. It didn't have multiple objects. So that's fine for this object. I'm gonna press the up arrow key to select this one. And here we can see that there are some, some problems here. So for example, on this one, if we do the exact same thing, we go down to uh, polygroups and you may not see these. There may be lots of these. They may be very, very small and difficult to see. So just hitting auto groups is a great way to just know that you're selecting the, your main object here. So we can hit Control and Shift, which changes us to the Select tool. We can just click on that. That will isolate this. And then we can go to Geometry and say Delete Hidden. 
We'll do the same for the top piece. Again, auto groups. Control shift select and geometry modify topology and delete hidden. If we got an if we didn't get an error message there, uh, a dialogue that popped up, that means that we there there were some objects because every time you don't, after I've already deleted these, if I hit this again, now it's gonna say you need to hide something. So basically there was something hidden the first time. So this may work. The, this model mate right now might be good enough uh, to, to actually work if we merged all of these together. But what I like to do is just make to make absolutely sure that things are going to work is just use the Zeri Mesher to try and get that. The reason I say that is like you do have some other problems up here. Some of this mesh is kind of kind of ropey and may present some problems later on. So if you make one Zeri Mesh object and then you project these details, Zeri Mesh will always give you a watertight mesh. So that's a much much better way to just ensure that the file isn't going to give you any problems. So to do this, we need to store the current state of the model. We can do that by holding control and up here in the undo history, we can just click on the latest undo. Once we've done that, we can go to our Zeri Mesher. Just accept the default and hit Zeri Mesh. Depending on the complexity of your mesh, you may need to increase this amount here a little bit to, you know, anywhere up to 10,000, whatever. But in general, the, the defaults are quite good. So that's now given us a much lower resolution mesh here. And you can see that we, we've lost all of those details. So in order to get them back, we'll hit divide, which is control and D. And then we go up to our sub tool and under project, we have project history. And that will bring back some of those details. I can hit control and D again to divide it one more time and project the history again. We're now on 200,000 polygons. I'll control D again, project history again. And now we're up close to the 1 million polygons that we had before. And those details that were problematic before, I now know are going to be on a single mesh. So if you're 3D printing this or you're using the intersection mask or, or anything like that that requires a watertight mesh, this is the approach to take. I'll do the same thing for the other two wings here. We'll just, and you'll notice actually, when I have this one selected, the undo history of this is stored here. If I select another object, I'm just holding Alt and clicking on another object. You'll see this red mark here, and that's basically just telling you that there is an undo history stored in this scene, but not for this currently selected object. It doesn't really matter. As soon as I hit control and tap here, it's going to replace that and say, okay, give me an undo state, or, or store the state of the current subtool. So we can safely now go back down to geometry, hit our zero mesh. And now that we have that, we have a low res version of our mesh, so we can divide, go to our project history, if that's not enough detail, we'll divide again, go to our project history again, until we have enough polygons to give us what we are looking for. I'll do the same for the other subtool. Again, this is red because there is an undo history stored for the other wing, so I'll just hit control and I'll tap here in my undo history, and then hit zero mesh again. Once it's done, we'll hit divide, project history, divide, project history. And that's it, we're back in the game. So we now have three different subtools that are all made from subdivided meshes. Now you'll notice as well, if I open this up, that this one has four subdivisions, this one has three, this one has three. They can have varying amounts. In order to use the intersection masker, what we'll have to do is merge these down. So I'm just gonna hit merge down. Always okay, merge down. And when you do that, it's gonna give you the three subdivisions that we had on the last two subtools here, because that's the, the one that's common to all of them, the amount that's common to all of them. So if we try and use the intersection masker now from the Z plugin, it's not going to work because it, it demands that you don't have subdivisions. So all we have to do is just delete these, delete the lower ones, and then we can go back in here and hit create intersection mask. And this time it will actually work because the geometry is watertight and clean. So we can see that by just control shift clicking on one and see that's that masked, that's the mask there, that's the mask on that one. So that's it. Um, if you want to fix your meshes, this is the approach to take. Whether you're 3D printing using intersection mask or, or sending something out to a CNC machine or anything like that, generally this is the approach I take to cleaning up meshes that were being created with the DynaMesh. Hope this tip helps and as usual, click like and subscribe and all the usual YouTube stuff. All right, cheers, bye.